Uh, thank you very much. Uh, first of all, I have to make uh, two disclaimers. One, as you see on the screen, is uh, that I adhere to the same commitment uh, as uh, the organizers about uh, our attitude to military solution to any conflict. And the second disclaimer is that I apologize that I'll a little bit digress from the um, main uh, um, main uh, um, uh, basically a uh, few talks uh, earlier, which were more concentrated on logic and philosophy of language. I will be uh, talking more about epistemology. However, the the object uh, of my study. Uh, so fake news and um, uh, it it's, uh, uh, could be in a sense also uh, described as an abstract object, uh, as a linguistic object first and as a fictional, <laughs> or at least referring to a fictional object in the second sense. So let me quickly, yes, this is the, uh, can I, um, maybe I will, I can only share the, um, I, I want to share just the presentation. Yes, thank you. Uh, should be better. Uh, okay. Oh, wait. Yes. Uh, so the um, as I said, uh, my talk is offered with Mirko Farina and also Andrea Lavazza. And we uh, would like to talk about epistemic responsibility, rights and duties during the COVID-19 pandemic. Okay, uh, let me briefly state the uh, uh, plan for this talk. I will first uh, introduce the key concepts, uh, which uh, we discuss that is a fake news, so filter bubbles and echo chambers. Uh, then we will focus more on echo chambers because we feel they're particularly dangerous phenomena. Uh, then we argue that the reason for the appearance of echo chambers lies in the Arthur. adoption. Arthur, I'm sorry, we uh, cannot see slight changes. Oh, you cannot yeah. see. Uh -huh. uh, okay, try, maybe. Yeah. Yes. Once again, please. Okay, I'll just share my whole screen then. Okay. Okay. Um, in this way, I'll just put the, yes, here, so you will see my screen anyway. Uh, okay, so this is the plan for the talk, uh, and um, uh, yes, this is the plan. And um, third point is that uh, we argue that the reason for the appearance of echo chambers lies in the adoption of what we call epistemic vices. And in the last part of the talk, we suggest a way to deal with these echo chambers. Okay, so let's start first with the definition. Uh, so I would uh, refer to uh, a definition uh, proposed by Pritchard. Uh, uh, he uh, sums up uh, the definition in, in five points and five differences. Uh, uh, fa fake news or fake news from the genuine news. First is that unlike genuine news, uh, fake news deliberately conveys misleading information. Uh, but it's not just it. Uh, it is still presented as news, uh, uh, just as forgery of a painting is presented as the real thing. Uh, third, fake news involves an intent to mislead. Uh, not any fake news um, involves an intent to mislead. For example, some satirical news site, which uh, is a parody, for example, for news, uh, can contain fake news, but it does not uh, in intend uh, to mislead. And uh, fourth is that fake news need not, in fact, mislead. So people actually uh, may not be misled by hearing or uh, seeing fake news. And uh, five, um, an ontological claim about fake news is that it's not in itself a type of news. Uh, it is to be distinguished from a genuine form of news that by an epistemological criterion, uh, that, namely that it has a poor epistemic pedigree. Okay, and the two other uh, concepts which I would like to talk uh, also about is uh, filter bubbles and echo chambers. So these are uh, basically the vehicles which help spread of this fake news. So first is a more familiar concept is a filter bubble. Uh, 
these are informational defined as informational spaces where those relying on their news invariably get the information that favors their opinion. Uh, so this is usually described as like someone's news feed, which generates news um, of, of, uh, which are related to their friends, to the groups to which they are subscribed and uh, so on. So this is a, creates a kind of a bubble uh, where uh, alternate uh, alternative information uh, does not uh, come uh, inside. Uh, however, uh, filter bubbles can be burst uh, if uh, there is some way to introduce like, uh, uh, alternative information, alternative arguments, and a person can be persuaded um, uh, by this new uh, uh, relevant information, uh, which he did not uh, before uh, had access to. Um, but uh, the second phenomenon is like more dangerous this is called echo chambers, uh, defined as group homophilus, like like-minded or similar individuals, where members have mostly interactions with other members and make choices about what information to attend to. So this is uh, a different phenomenon because echo chambers uh, uh, suppose that people who are inside, they selectively filter the information as either true or false. So any information which comes inside an echo, echo chamber uh, immediately gets labeled uh, true or false, depending, of course, on the prior views of the person who is inside this echo chamber. And in this case, no amount of um, expert opinion or sound argument or uh, facts can actually move uh, the person to change their view because they will just distrust uh, this kind of information. So, and uh, of course, uh, the question is uh, how people get inside these echo chambers, why some people uh, are so difficult to uh, dissuade, so, so why, so, why it is almost impossible, um, even First-hand experience cannot persuade those people. Uh, I give this example in the paper, uh, which uh, we make on this topic, uh, of a person who, uh, who is a COVID denier, COVID-19 denier, and uh, she uh, had the, she, she was infected with COVID. She had serious consequences. She was uh, uh, in the hospital for like almost a month. Uh, uh, with the COVID, uh, uh, however, uh, she actually did not uh, change her opinion on, about vaccination, about COVID in general. So it seems like almost nothing uh, gets through. Uh, like how can we, what can we do? So this is the question which uh, our researchers have been asking. Okay, so what are the answers? So first we will consider some answers which are given by uh, psychologists, namely evolutionary psychologists, and there are two, two main strands here of research in evolutionary psychology. One is motivated reasoning, and the other is um, in-group or out-group attitudes. So motivated reasoning basically is the idea that if people already have certain views, yeah, so they're, they're already uh, possess certain attitudes, and these attitudes they're so persevering that whatever uh, comes uh, uh, against this, whatever is uh, uh, dissenting with this type of attitudes um, creates a kind of cognitive dissonance, which uh, to avoid the person just uh, basically uh, persists in their absurd belief. So that they're motivated uh, a priori, to believe certain things. So if a person believes a priori that, for example, um, like using condoms is uh, uh, like for from some religious of, of view that using condoms is bad, then basically any information related uh, to uh, empirical research related to using condoms will not persuade those kinds of people. Or if a person has a prior belief that uh, uh, capital punishment is bad, uh, then no amount of uh, positive information that uh, empirical research says that it's 
has some benefits will still not persuade them. So this is one way. And the second one is in-group, out-group attitudes means that person, people likely to favor of their group against other persons, other people's groups. And uh, this can be also considered as a possible explanation why people turn out into echo, in echo chambers. However, we consider that these two uh, uh, explanations are not enough. Of course, uh, they add some, um, they could explain somewhat why people um, have these uh, fake beliefs. However, uh, there is um, something more to it. Yes, um, for example, as um, some researchers write, evidence indicates that people fall for fake news because they fail to think. They because they think not because they think in a motivated or in identity protective way. And the same goes for in group out out group divide per se. Uh, another two. Uh, uh, or explanations I briefly go through is like uh, uh, another uh, proposal is, okay, let's see how IQ and uh, higher education correlate here. Yes, of course, there were some studies which were performed which show some kind of correlation uh, between this uh, higher IQ, better education and uh, um, tendency to believe uh, fake news. However, there's a lot of uh, criticism. Uh, some people can point to a lot of uh, uh, counterexamples, like people highly educated, like Luke Montagnier, who believe uh, like uh, 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 COVID vaccine contains uh, HIV uh, uh, and so on, uh, other uh, types of fake news. So yes, it is, again, a kind of a predictor, but we need a more fine-grained fine -grained solution for this. Uh, cognitive bias also was proposed as a way uh, to uh, explain the emergence of, fake, of uh, echo chambers. Uh, of course, uh, some uh, def define uh, that echo chambers emerge as a consequence of cognitive mechanisms such as confirmation bias and other types of biases. Uh, however, this explanation suffers from the same uh, same problem, uh, cognitive biases operate on a subpersonal level. Everybody has them, they're universal. The question is why some people are inside their chambers, some people are not, yes. Uh, this is the question. Okay, so the, what we propose is an alternative explanation based on a, a virtue approach, a responsibilist approach. Uh, so who are responsibilists? Uh, responsibilists are those who emphasize the importance of epistemic virtues and uh, vices. So using this uh, Aristotelian ethical uh, terminology <clears throat> uh, in prediction of whether a person will be more susceptible to uh, misinformation. Uh, so this uh, the list of the most prominent uh, uh, <clears throat> Responsibilist, uh, responsibilists, uh, Zagzebski, Badley, and Kassam. Uh, so uh, uh, the language of virtue and uh, vice, as I said, was adopted from Aristotle and uh, represents uh, uh, as an Aristotle, uh, the uh, excellences and uh, the weaknesses of a personal character. So uh, the same, <clears throat> the same uh, we can say about excellences uh, and weaknesses of intellectual uh, character. Uh, particularly in this talk, we are concerned with the vices, yes? So the, the vice, uh, what is a vice? Um, several definitions, but uh, one of the uh, more uh, popular uh, definitions proposed by uh, Kasim Kassam is that um, epistemic vices can be defined as traits of character which will likely lead those who adopt them towards falsehood. So this is a kind of consequentialist um, definition. Uh, and uh, he names some of the biases such as dogmatism, intellectual sloppiness, intellectual snobism, epistemic injustice, and gullibility. It's just, of course, not a complete list, just to give an idea of what is meant by epistemic vice. Okay, so what is epistemic vice? So how can it be divided? Again, I briefly, uh, sketchily uh, want to introduce the structure of epistemic vice as uh, 
uh, proposed by Jason Baer recently in this uh, monograph, Vice Epistemology. So he identifies four key components of epistemic vice. The first is defective motivation. So there is some people who are not uh, are like ill motivated for knowledge. They're not motivated for truth. They're not motivated to reach uh, knowledge. Uh, they are motivated uh, uh, differently, uh, <clears throat> and uh, this is called a defective motivation or absence or lack of um, uh, proper motivation. Defective judgment, uh, which requires basically uh, uh, applying uh, 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 certain um, uh, basically uh, Kantian definition, yes, uh, the, uh, the power of judgment is here. And uh, uh, two other is competence and affection, because uh, applying certain, uh, even logical rules to uh, discourse requires certain competence, even people who, have, who are motivated to apply logical rules and uh, who uh, know about logical rules, uh, not maybe have not acquired uh, enough competence to do it. And affection like, involves the emotional attitude uh, to cognition. Uh, again, it would be uh, either a person is, uh, 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 ha has, uh, doesn't have a proper motivation, is satisfied with it, uh, or even takes pleasure in it. Uh, again, so this is a, an effective component. Okay, so how does that relate to COVID? Uh, there was a paper in 2021 uh, by um, a few authors who made empirical research, uh, uh, it's called here you see, the epistemic vice predicts acceptance of COVID-19 misinformation. So here, this is a graph. Uh, basically, they um, <clears throat> divided uh, the, the all the vices into two groups, uh, indifference, vices of indifference, people are indifferent to acquiring truth and knowledge, and rigidity, how uh, well people are uh, uh, able to change their opinions given the uh, new evidence, for example. And they um, uh, created certain questionnaires. They had a very large sociological survey, like over a thousand, I think about a thousand people. And as you see, uh, the, the, the correlation strongly um, suggests that people with higher uh, scores on indifference, uh, yes, uh, uh, bar and, and rigidity, are uh, more likely to uh, hold misinformation, uh, 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 long uh, um, false beliefs about uh, fake news, uh, such as like, uh, for example, they suggested uh, such beliefs. Do you agree that uh, adding pepper to, to, to your food will uh, uh, stop COVID or that flies, um, COVID is transmitted by flies and so on, or the 5G uh, uh, <clears throat> somehow affects uh, vaccination and so on. Uh, okay. Um, so what makes, um, again, we're going back, uh, uh, to a more specific um, here, I just uh, I want focus on one important vice which is at play, because uh, and of course all vices uh, are important uh, in uh, explaining why people believe fake news. But one is particular because it uh, relates to the uh, situation of communication. Yes, and this is called uh, epistemic violence. Basically it is, or epistemic silencing, when a person uh, uh, intentionally refuses um, to uh, hear the evidence of uh, uh, another person on a, a different um, ground. Uh, for example, initially it was introduced um, to explain why uh, black women, for example, were discredited um, in the society. Uh, um, because of the gender, uh, because of their uh, race. Uh, and uh, we claim that uh, uh, this can apply to uh, not just uh, racial issues, and not just uh, gender issues, but in general, uh, <clears throat> to explain this. Okay, uh, someone already brought the concept of context. Um, I would also want to contextualize uh, epistemic virtue and epistemic wise, uh, because uh, uh, 
our intellectual character, our character traits uh, uh, can uh, function well uh, only in appropriate uh, context. Um, like eyesight, if it's too dark, uh, like even if I have good eyesight, um, um, uh, probably will not uh, have a clear view. And the same is uh, uh, other factors, the context factors which affect knowledge and our intellectual character traits. And one of these factors, of course, are COVID, because the COVID itself, any and any other um, like this kind of a huge uh, factor, which uh, <clears throat> with which comes a lot of different um, uh, misinformation, fake news, uh, created a wave, a wave which is was much more difficult to resist than it was prior, before. And to understand what happened is we, we need to, um, I'm closing to the end, is we need to separate between the two concepts, the epistemic environment and epistemic situation. So epistemic situation is basically, it's a relatively kind of stable temporary situation. For example, uh, they can change like COVID is a, an epistemic situation which we get in, we can get out of and uh, it, uh, the influence of this situation diminishes over time. But uh, environment is something stable which stays with us uh, 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 all the time. The epistemic environment is what sources of, of information we use to get uh, our information. Are, are they um, reliable uh, sources? Um, uh, how, <clears throat> how many, uh, again, is disinformation or fake news? we uh, face. Uh, this type of epistemic environment can be more um, uh, friendly for a person. So even a person maybe not very critical, not very epistemically virtuous can overcome uh, any um, uh, fake news that they face uh, or unfriendly or extremely unfriendly, unfriendly when almost everything or any information a person faces may be fake news. Okay, and two questions, lastly, I will answer uh, two questions, what can we do? So we can change our epistemic environment. Uh, in the wide sense, of course, epistemic environment represents uh, like environment on a global or state level or national level. And here, uh, of course, uh, it is required to introduce change legislation, uh, introduce uh, new legislation on possibly national and transnational level, the role of communities and business uh, businesses, especially social networks, uh, and big social networks like Twitter and Facebook and so on. But uh, we, <clears throat> I would uh, like to pay attention to the more narrow sense of the epistemic environment. The uh, narrow sense of epistemic environment is my own epistemic environment, which I choose through my voluntary exposure. Uh, which websites I use, which uh, social networks I use, which groups to which groups I'm subscribed, uh, to which experts I'm inclined to listen to, and so on. Uh, and this is kind of uh, responsibility which is mine and no one else's. And I claim that if we claim, of course, that if one's epistemic environment in the narrow sense is that person's responsibility, then it's possible to fail that responsibility. And as we claimed earlier, a person's intellectual character, their intellectual vices, is primarily the reason for this. Um, sadly, <laughs> yes. And I uh, uh, just want to conclude with the uh, last slide. Of course, we recognize some risks of using these terminologies, ethical terminology of vice, and uh, and virtue because uh, we understand or acknowledge that this terminology could be, or should be used with um, caution, especially in politically sensitive issues, uh, because people are likely to label their opponents as intellectually incapacitated or vicious simply because they share opposing political views. That's why we put this caution sign. <laughs> okay, thank you for your attention. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Arthur. So, uh, any questions? Yeah, uh, yeah Hello. Hello. No, there, there wasn't a question. It was a, an, um, 
a clap of hands. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. sorry. I, no, but I, I do. I, we cannot hear. I do. I, do. I hear. I can hear. Uh, yeah. Can you yes. hear me? Yes, I can hear. I, I do have a question. So. Yes, I can hear you well. Okay. Uh, so, so I have a question about the, the, the one of the very last things you said that the uh, basically the uh, the when one fails to uh, one's responsibility to select a good uh, uh, epistemic environment, that's due to uh, its um, intellectual character and intellectual vices mainly, and so on. That, that didn't that didn't seem to me uh, correct uh, across the board because you you might think that a person uh, doesn't have the intellectual vice uh, in the way you specify the motivation uh, for truth, um, a good judgment, uh, competence in um, developing information and even uh, the, the emotional aspect, but it's just, uh, it's just the, 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 the general environment where it's in, which is not, the, I mean, the, the country or the, the part of society or whatever is so, um, uh, it doesn't offer to him any good epistemic environment. So it's just a brainwashed into uh, taking certain views, using certain uh, uh, channel of information as allegedly reliable and so on. So it's, I mean, in that case, uh, he, he, he's not relying on, on a good epistemic environment, but that, that, that doesn't seem uh, uh, that the causes his uh, intellectual bias is, is, is very unfortunate. Uh, external social circumstances. Mm -hmm. Yes, I understand the question. Yes, maybe, I'm sorry, maybe it sounded uh, uh, incorrect. I do not, of course, uh, we don't mean that uh, the individual responsibility is a sole responsibility because there are different circumstances. We can say that people from disadvantaged uh, social groups, yes, for example, um, even if they're not brainwashed, but he didn't or she didn't receive a good education and so on. Of course, uh, there is a community responsibility, the state responsibility. Uh, there's on different levels, but even then, that we cannot just uh, put this whole responsibility on the shoulders of someone else, and we should leave some responsibility. Like even if there, even if like there is not ninety nine percent of information is just brainwashing and propaganda. Uh, there is a chance that if a person develops a critical mind, he can resist. He, like there's a, for him, it's much more difficult to do it. Like, uh, to, but it's possible. So there is still some responsibility which we leave. We leave a put on the shoulders of an individual. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Leah. Thank you, Artura. I guess uh, no more questions.